Hi there and welcome to this week's 5 Minute Masterclass. It's Kate here from the Safeguarding Academy. This week we're looking at what to do with a disclosure. Disclosures from children and young people happen much more frequently than I think we'd care to admit or to like. And increasingly these disclosures are of a difficult nature, they're of abuse, of emotional harm and sometimes of uh, a sexual nature. And as we start this new term it's I thought time to reflect on what we do with these disclosures when they come through. How do we make the decision that they are worthy of further referral? Well, that obviously is a, a subject for something much, much bigger than a five-minute masterclass. But ultimately, it's not your decision. If a child makes a disclosure, there are certain processes that need to be followed. And there's um, guidance within my Recording Disclosures ebook, which you'll find on the website. And also in the the blog that's on the website too. In terms of recording a disclosure, those previous documents um, and videos cover that in a decent amount of detail. In this masterclass, we're looking at what you do with it. Well, the straightforward answer is you do something with it. You cannot sit on information you have to pass it on. Doesn't matter whether you think it's irrelevant, whether you think it's just a joke, or whether you think there is um, nothing to it really, that the, the child's just kind of saying it for saying its sake. Your responsibility is to make sure somebody else knows that this has happened. And whether or not that information comes to fruition, i.e. something bigger happens with it, is ultimately a test of time and also a test of how whether there are further disclosures and how that information is handled by those who are dealing with children and young people. So if a disclosure is made, you know to record it, but you have to pass it on and you have to do something with it. And I say this with the greatest respect in the world because what you do is so, so vital. But in my role as a child protection lawyer, I see so many cases where information wasn't passed on sufficiently quickly, was held on to because it didn't seem like it was relevant. It maybe wasn't shared at conferences or at call groups. Um, where children were known to social services. In cases where they aren't known to social services initially, the information isn't necessarily passed on in as timely a fashion as it should be, either because the pressures of the DSO's job was too great to pass it on that quickly, or it wasn't deemed necessary to pass it on until something else happened, and there maybe were four or five incidents before that information was passed on. Remember, each of us who work with children hold a piece of that child's jigsaw and every serious case review that there has ever been talks about a lack of communication and a lack of concerns being shared and information being shared between parties. So in this week's 5 Minute Masterclass, the message I want to give is that you need to do something with that information, whether it's shared um, just internally for your designated safeguarding office to make that decision or whether the decision is to pass it on to social services or to see if there are further events later down the line depending on the level of seriousness but the bottom line is you have to do something with that information until next week have a safe week <laughs>